OK. Uh, so welcome, everyone. I'm Vanessa Little from VMware. Uh, this is Marcos Hernandez, also from VMware. And we're here to talk to you today about VMware Integrated OpenStack with NSX Policy Redirection for NFE. I know we've listed this um, section as beginner, but we do have a technical deep dive. But I think we have a lot of time left in, in, the, in our presentation. So if there's anything that you have questions about while we're in the middle of the demo, please feel free to raise your hand and ask. When you do ask questions, we'd, we'd appreciate if you could use the microphone so everyone could hear. All right. So here's what I'd like to go over today. Um, we'll go over the general concept of the demo and the, the workflow of what it is that we've built and we'd like to, to show you today. The various components that we've used in, in our demo build. Uh, VMware vCloud NFV, which uses VMware integrated OpenStack as a key component. Um, and VMware NSX. We'll go over the architecture of, of the design of the demo that we built, and we'll go over the use cases, and we'll do a live demo, internet permitting, and then we'll have a little time for Q&A at the end. So what we hope to achieve today and, and to display is that we want to use VMware integrated OpenStack configured in conjunction with NSX. Show of hands in the room, how many of you have had your hands on an NSX deployment? Very good, that's excellent. Um, and so we're also going to show that you can set up the applications, the networks, and other <coughs> workloads using the VMware Integrated OpenStack Manager and how, to, how those configurations will propagate and spawn into various other components so that you can use one single dashboard for configuration. Uh, then we're going to show adding layer four to seven security services to this build and, and work with the NSX APIs. Oops. Using the NSX APIs uh, to be able to configure policy-based redirection. In this, um, in this demo, we use the FortiGate FortiNet firewall for an example. All right, this thing's killing me. And we'll show how that's configured with NSX Manager to achieve that policy-based redirection, and then we'll do a live demo. So the components in our, in our stack today, uh, the key component is vCloud NFV. Show of hands, anyone who's even heard of this before? Pretty good. That's actually really good. Um, so vCloud NFV is a suite of software, all composed by VMware, that we've built together and configured in a very specific reference architecture. And we've tuned it for specifically for NFV type workloads. And it comes in two flavors. One uses vCloud Director. And the one that we've used today uses VMware Integrated OpenStack. Now, part of this whole suite of tools also includes our management and monitoring telemetry suite with vRealize Operations, vRealize Log Insight, and not on this slide is also vRealize Network Insights, formerly known as Arkin, recently acquired by VMware. And so the VMware Integrated OpenStack architecture so the slide build here. Oops. Um, so where did it go now? I'm having so much trouble with the clickers here. There. All right. So the VMware Integrated OpenStack architecture. It, uh, so what VMware has done is we've implemented vanilla OpenStack on top of the ESX hypervisor. Because as we all know, OpenStack doesn't really care about the hypervisor. It just needs it as a, as a functional component. And so that's really the only difference. All of the APIs, all of the northbound interfaces, even the, the Horizon dashboard is all exactly identical to what you know and love with a few VMware logos thrown in. Um, the advantages of doing this is that we get to use all of the existing VMware tools that already interact with our hypervisor for management, monitoring, and telemetry, as well as fault tolerance, um, dynamic resource scheduling, et cetera, et cetera. You get to apply all of those extra tools on top of your OpenStack build. So that's the real key difference between the way VMware does it versus if you were to download it off the internet. VMware NSX, so this is the VMware SDN, or Software Defined Networking Overlay, that's used. So we've integrated NSX with the OpenStack build uh, in order to leverage all of the different capabilities of NSX within your native OpenStack deployment. So in this demo, we demonstrate what we can do with NSX security and that we use the NetX suite of API libraries integrated with a third-party VNF, in this case, the FortiGate firewall, um, to be able to achieve policy-based routing and redirection. So this is really key for NFV environments because to, in order to build a service graph, you don't want to have to have every packets linearly go through each of your VNFs. You want them to only go to the VNFs where they, they need to go and where they belong so that your network is, is efficient and scales accordingly. 
Uh, so this is what we're going, to, we're going to demonstrate to you today, that you can use the NSX policy-based redirection to point to the VNF that you need it to go to. And so the architecture of what we've built today, these are the technical specs. I'm not going to go over them in detail, but it just shows that we've built a number of VMs within a, a VMware deployment. Uh, we can make this deck readily available or help anyone who wants to stand this up in their own labs later on. Just come see us after our lecture. And so the workflow of what we're going to show you today. First, we register Fortinet as a, as a security service with the NSX manager. So this is something that's NSX specific. When you want to onboard a new VNF onto it that has the NetX integrations, you register it with the NSX manager. Then we auto-deploy the FortiGate VMX to all the hypervisors. Because it lives in the VMware kernel, or it connects to the VMware kernel, it has to live on each one of the hypervisor instances. In this case, we use two physical servers, and so it has to be deployed to both. Then the FortiGate VMX connects with the FortiGate VMX service manager, and so this takes care of um, license verification and synchronization. So the FortiGate VMX manager is the master controller of all of your FortiGate policies um, and all of your security policies as we've defined them here. So that, those policies and license verification then has to propagate to all the instances that have been deployed to the, the various hypervisors in your network. Finally, the redirection policy rules are updated, and this pushes the, the FortiGate policy through your network. And then we have real-time updates of the object database. So this is really key. Um, because of the NetX integration with NSX, anytime you make a configuration within the NSX manager, it automatically propagates into the FortiGate VMX manager so that you don't have to configure all of these things in two different interfaces. It unifies your dashboard into one, ma one management control plane. And finally, finally, the policy synchronization is pushed down to all the hypervisor instances as they're deployed across your network. And now Marcos is going to explain the demo build. Thank you, Vanessa. So <clears throat> like Vanessa said, we're going to try to spend the bulk of the presentation on the technical demo and more of a technical presentation uh, and content. So in this demo environment, we have uh, the usual components that you would uh, require for uh, vSphere uh, operations. We have a vCenter that is managing three uh, vSphere clusters, one for management, one for edge services, and one for compute. The compute cluster is where your OpenStack instances are going to land. When you boot instances using Nova, they will land on that uh, specific cluster, which in this particular demo environment has two nodes. And this is also the cluster where we're going to put the VNF from Fortinet in this example. We, can, we also integrate with a number of other uh, security uh, vendors and uh, next generation firewall vendors. Fortinet is one of our uh, leading uh, solutions uh, and, and partners. So that's why we decided to include them here in this demo. So since we have two compute nodes in this compute cluster, we will need one uh, VM from Fortinet, one VNF from Fortinet on each uh, node in that cluster for a total of two. And then I'll explain later what happens inside of the kernel when NSX does redirection of the interesting traffic. The edge cluster is where your OpenStack routers will uh, re reside. Um, when you create a neutron router in OpenStack using standard API calls, uh, the NSX plugin will, uh, in, in, in turn, uh, instigate the creation of a what, what is known as an NSX Edge Services Gateway. Uh, we support both centralized routing and distributed routing services in, in NSX, all consumable from the standard Neutron API. And then in the management cluster, we have the vCenter, as I mentioned, we have the NSX control and management plane uh, in, responsible for all the uh, operations of NSX, and we also have the OpenStack control plane itself. This is where VIO resides. And in this build, we have VIO 3.0, which is seven VMs uh, that make up that control plane and that can scale to the maximums uh, of a single vCenter. That is a thousand hypervisors and however many uh, VMs you can cram into that. So it's a very simple environment, but it's uh, a representation of 
uh, what you would see in production. Because when we uh, do this with actual uh, customer deployment, this is the uh, distribution of clusters and configuration that we recommend as a best practice. We want functional clusters for management services. We want functional clusters for north-south routing services or bridging services, because uh, our plugin also supports an L2 bridge. And then we want our, your compute clusters, your payload clusters for the OpenStack instances to be separate and those will be controlled by Nova Compute. So even though this is a, a demo environment that is using nested ESXi, it's just a micro representation of what you would see in very, very large environments with uh, hundreds of hypervisors and thousands of VMs. Okay, so as part of the um, preparation and the prerequisites for doing um, NSX, we have to do something called host preparation. And this is nothing more than a kernel update. We take the, this compute nodes, which are going to be hosting uh, my OpenStack instances, uh, need to be prepared for NSX. And that is a kernel update that installs an, uh, some, some uh, like I said, kernel updates that make all the distributed data plane services that NSX support uh, possible. That includes uh, VXLAN, uh, VIP, or a VXLAN uh, kernel update for over, overlay. Uh, um, for overlay uh, networking. A distributed firewall kernel update, which is used by neutron security groups to create east-west uh, segmentation policy and micro-segmentation from OpenStack. And we also have a distributed routing kernel module that uh, allows uh, for the hypervisor to become a router for the VMs hosted within that hypervisor. So this is host preparation. And this all has to be done prior to the VMware integrated OpenStack integration. And it's also a prerequisite for doing service redirection with uh, any of uh, our partners, including Fortinet. Okay, that is showing the representation of the cluster. There's also this notion of a transport zone. This is uh, extremely critical. In NSX, a transport zone is a logical construct that defines the diameter of your uh, logical networks and your secure, or of your logical networks, not necessarily the security policies, but of your logical networks. So uh, in the simplest form, a transport zone will include all the clusters that will be used in NSX services. So we have a management cluster, we have an edge uh, cluster and compute cluster, so potentially all these uh, three clusters could be included. You don't necessarily need to include the management cluster because there are no live uh, uh, tenant uh, VMs that will be running there. It's just control plane uh, interactions. Uh, but you could do that if you want to protect that management cl cluster with micro-segmentation policy. So that's completely up to you. But the edge cluster and the compute cluster need to be part of this notion of a transport zone. And that is what makes possible for NSX to exchange services across this uh, element. Okay? So let's go ahead and jump over to the live demo because we have time to um, show uh, what we've done here. And hopefully the internet um, <laughs> connection will work. So we're going to log into vCenter and I'm going to show you a setup. Hopefully that's um, not an eye chart. Um, while I do this and while I log, I, I, I just want to bring to your attention that we're working, uh, what, what we're showing here is possible right now. It's a way that you would do service redirection in an NFV environment or a non-NFV environment using NSX and OpenStack today. There are some caveats though. The assumption here is that the cloud administrator has completely relinquished network and security controls from the tenant. The tenant is using OpenStack to launch VMs, interact with the compute and storage APIs, but network and security remain in the hands of the network and security teams. Uh, so what that means is that we're going to be doing some things in OpenStack for compute and storage services, but when it comes to network and security, that's going to be happening directly in NSX. And that is possible today. It's a way to consume advanced security services in an OpenStack deployment today. As you may or may not know, neutron security groups, which are the preferred way of doing implementing security in OpenStack, are only layer three, layer four aware. So you, with neutron security groups, you can protect a, a network or a VM from uh, uh, talking on port 80, for example. But there is no native way in OpenStack to actually determine that what's right in port 80 is HTTP traffic. There is no visibility. So NSX does have a capability via third-party integration with Fortinet to discern application traffic and create policy to secure your application by looking at the actual 
layer five through seven traffic and for your, in your east-west implementation. And if I could just interject here. Please. So this is really key in service provider NFE deployments because they're multi-tenant deployments and you don't want to have inter-tenant communication happening. You don't want to have one malicious tenant that's able to compromise other tenants. Using, using this type of topology on an, an OpenStack environment, this is actually possible. With normal neutron networking, this is not yet possible. Yeah, and, and the key word there is not yet possible, uh, but it's going to be possible. Uh, we are uh, very fortunate that we have here in the room uh, two of our top leading uh, neutron engineers. So uh, Adid and Gary are working. They're here. Uh, they're great contributors to a neutron community. So if you have some questions about the roadmap and the things that we're working on, uh, they're the people uh, that you need to uh, talk to. And um, we, they, they've been working on an implementation that will elevate to Neutron the consumption of these redirection services. And we are currently in the process of testing and validating the various use cases. So very soon, and this will be incorporated into VIO natively when you integrate it with NSX, very soon it will be possible. Everything that we show, we're showing you today outside of OpenStack will be possible inside of OpenStack. So a tenant or a network and security admin will be able to consume redirection security policies without bypassing the API, which is a preferred way of doing uh, a cloud. Right? If you're doing OpenStack, that should be your one and only entry point for your consumption. But there are some customers that want to do redirection today, and they don't necessarily, or they cannot wait for Neutron to have all of these capabilities. So what we're showing is what's possible today, but I just want to point out something extremely important that we are absolutely working in promoting all these services and consumption to Neutron. So you don't have to do it at the NSX layer. Hopefully that is uh, uh, clear. And uh, Adit and Gary are here, and they can share some more details of what we're working on. So um, again, that's kind of an eye chart, but these are the clusters that we were referencing earlier. We have an edge cluster for our neutron routers, compute clusters for our instances, and then the management cluster, and they have been prepared for NSX. Compute and edge have. Uh, what we've done here under service deployment, okay, I better hurry up. Under service deployment, we have deployed the Fortinet uh, solution. So the Fortinet solution uh, has registered with NSX. And now NSX and Fortinet are linked. So every time that I do something in NSX that is related to security policies that I want to redirect, Fortinet, the Fortinet solution will actually fetch that information from NSX and two-way communication be uh, between uh, the solutions will be possible. Um, so let me walk you. We're going to leave NSX. This is the NSX uh, uh, UI. We're going to leave NSX for now. Excuse me. We're going to leave NSX and we're going to go to uh, OpenStack. So let's go ahead and log into OpenStack and let me show you something uh, very um, important here. In this particular demo, in this particular environment, I am not using neutral security groups. Okay? And remember, all security operations are not happening in OpenStack. They're being controlled from NSX. So neutral security groups do not apply. So what I've done is for the VMs that I want to uh, put under the NSX solution and uh, traffic, the traffic for those VMs redirect to the Fortinet uh, VNF, for those VMs, I have detached the neutral security group from the VNIC of that VM. Um, if you look at it, if we edit, for example, this web server, and I'll show you a topology in a minute, and we do edit security groups, you will see that there are no security groups attached to this particular VM. So again, very, very important. We're bypassing Neutron security groups all together and affecting security directly on NSX. This is possible only in Mitaka to be, to be able to create VMs that do not have a security group uh, association. It was possible before Mitaka, but you have to do some uh, massaging of um, the um, uh, with neutron ports and things like that in Mitaka. Mitaka made it really, really easy to launch VMs with no security group association. So again, I'm repeating myself, but this is very important. We are bypassing the security in OpenStack and interacting directly uh, with NSX. And the topology that we have in this environment is very uh, simple. 
Let me show you use curvature here real quick. And uh, you will see the topology here. So it's a two-tier app that has um, a router connecting two networks, DBnet, where a DB um, VM is, has been created, and WebNet, where two web servers have been created. So a very, very simplistic, very, very easy to understand two-tier app. Two web servers connecting to a router that uh, connects to the backend uh, database server. Uh, I've done this in purpose. I've named this VMs. The name that I've uh, created for the, this VMs, for all three of them, ha have a common prefix of DMZ. Keep that in mind, make, make a mental note of that, because later, when we create the security and redirection policy, we're going to reference the VM name as our, as our classification uh, mechanism. Okay? So very simple two-tier topology as seen uh, from OpenStack. So two key points. No neutral security groups. This is like the fifth time I mentioned that. And um, meaning that all the security services are being controlled by the firewall team. So now I am going to impersonate the firewall team. I'm going to go back to NSX. And I am going to uh, take you here to Service Composer. Service Composer is a utility in NSX that allows implementing a wizard-based approach allows you to create security policies very, very easily. I have created a security group called Virtual DMC. And let's see what's in that security group. If I edit the security group, um, I, I will see here that, uh, OK, <laughs> no, no, no. Yay, live <laughs> demos. Yeah. It's OK. I don't freak out anymore. It happens yeah. all the time. So, um, so in this security group, a security group in NSX is just a wrapper. It's a bubble that aggregates VMs. VMs enter and leave that security group based on a membership criteria. Okay, in this case, the membership criteria is the VM name. I'm saying if a VM is created with a name that contains anywhere in that name, the DMC, the letter, letters DMZ, that VM will be associated with the security group. Right? Um, just like I, I can use VMs, I can use operating system names, I can use any attribute that describes that VM as seen by vCenter, it's fair game for, uh, to create a classification policy. Right now, there's no security policy. I'm just identifying which VMs will be subject to my security policy. And that is done with a security group and the membership criteria of that security group. The membership could also be static. I could statically assign VMs to that security group. But dynamic inclusion is more flexible because you don't have to, for, for environments where VMs uh, appear and disappear, where VMs are created and destroyed, uh, the action of this VMs, the, the fact or the mere act of this VMs coming and going, uh, if you use dynamic membership, means that you don't have to reconfigure your security policy every time a new VM is added. This is a very, very, very popular application with NSX, dynamic membership. And this is a policy language in NSX that allows you to create firewall policy that looks like your business. You can say, OK, this is my DMC security group. This is my web. This is my DB. I'm not creating policy based on IP addresses. So my security policy is going to look like my business. My security policy is not going to look like my network. Right? When you look at a firewall today, it's a bunch of IPs, and if you don't have like a, an Excel spreadsheet to, under, you know, to translate what 10.10.10.1 is, you don't, you don't know what your security policy is. Okay? So that is a security group. So I have um, three VMs that satisfy that membership criteria. There they are. If I were to create a fourth, a fifth, a sixth one, they would be automatically added as long as they satisfy, they meet the membership criteria. Uh, for the dynamic inclusion, OK? So those are my three VMs, Web 1, Web 2, and my DV VM. Now let's move on to security policies. Security policies, I have one here called Redirect DMC. OK, let's go ahead and edit this. A security policy is the security policy. What I'm doing is I'm taking the VMs that I already classified in a security group, and now I am going to apply a consistent security policy to them. And that security policy is 
will control the entire life cycle, security life cycle of that app. So we have guest introspection services. I'm not using that in this example, but NSX have services that actually look into the guests and do guest level protection. We're gonna, we're gonna bypass that. You can create firewall rules in the distributed firewall. This is our east-west internal firewall. You can say, okay, this is how prod is gonna talk to test, uh, or how my DMC is gonna talk to the internet. You can do that with very broad and coarse uh, firewall policies created in the firewall rules. But for the purpose of the demo, and because probably this is the first time that many of you see this, I, I kept it very simple. This is not a very realistic example. This is not how we see it in production. This is just for the purpose of the demo. I, if, you, if you notice here, there's something called network introspection services. Network introspection is where I create the redirection policy to the third party VNF, in this case, Fortinet. Right? And I'm, what I have here is an outbound and an inbound redirection policy where I am redirecting all the traffic to Fortinet. Basically, the firewall in NSX is not being used. It's a bypass. I am redirecting everything to Fortinet. This is not, and I need to emphasize this, this is not the way um, the, uh, typically that customers will do this. Um, typically, redirection will be of only a fraction of your traffic. You will only redirect high-risk traffic, traffic that you want to inspect, you only redirect a portion of the traffic. And then the security for the rest of the traffic is handled by the in-kernel NSX firewall. We don't need to punt or redirect that to Fortinet. But here, for the purposes of the demo, I'm redirecting everything to Fortinet. So basically, NSX is just um, a bump in the wire. Okay? So let's take a look at Fortinet now. So every single packet that is generated or received by um, the web VMs and the DV VMs will be redirected to Fortinet. So let's see what we can do here in Fortinet. So now I, and remember, I'm still the firewall guy, right? And I'm uh, controlling the security policy. So in Fortinet, uh, let's change the um, domain where we're operating. We have a domain called NSX. And here on their policy and objects, let me show you, fill, uh, show you first addresses. There is, right there, a address group in Fortinet called Virtual DMC. This was automatically synchronized with NSX when I created that first security group where I put my DMC VMs. This happens with no intervention from the security operator. I create a security group in Fortinet, I create a redirection policy, and that security group automatically appears on the Fortinet solution. And the three IP addresses for the three VMs in that security group are also automatically synchronized and reconciled. So the, I, we can see there the two web servers and the IP address for the database server. So this is one of the great, um, and, and this is in the workflow that Vanessa uh, was describing, it was step number two, uh, actually the last step. In the, in the integration process is constant two-way communication between Fortinet and NSX Manager where all these objects are synchronized. So now Fortinet knows about the VMs. They, it knows about the IP addresses of those VMs in that security group. And with that group, I can create a policy. Just to keep it very, very simple so I don't have to mock around with like firewall rules because I don't think that would be like too interesting, what I've done is I've allowed everything through the Fortinet Fortinet firewall. So let's take a step back. NSX is redirecting everything to Fortinet, and Fortinet in the firewall is allowing everything in and out of the environment. So essentially, I don't have any firewall rules. But I have enabled an antivirus security policy for the inbound and outbound traffic. Okay? And again, this is not very realistic. Like I mentioned a few minutes ago, in a real deployment, you would see a combination of east west security rules of the NSX firewall east-west security rules of the Fortinet or VNF firewall, and then maybe some additional introspection services like network AV, IPS, IDS. It all depends on the capabilities of the VNF. But because if it, if this is a demo and I didn't want to overwhelm you with information, we kept it very simple, and what we're going to be using in Fortinet is the AV engine. Okay, we're just looking at antivirus. Okay? So, I'm no longer the security admin. I am now an irresponsible user in the DMC, right? And I am going to a website, again, very hard to read, 
but trust me when I tell you this, this is just Adobe Get. I'm just going to browse a website and download a file. And uh, if you can read from where you're sitting, it's an iCar file. Who here is familiar with iCar? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's Europe, so you guys invented it, right? So it's a, it's, a, it's a file that looks and feels like a virus, but it's not a virus, and it's used to test your antivirus policy. So I am going to fetch that file uh, off of the internet right now. So let me go ahead and do that, right? So the file was downloaded, but if I explore the contents of that file, I can see that um, and in a browser, this would be rendered uh, better. It would be readable. But basically, Fortinet, because it's in the path, identified that as a virus and basically rewrote or rewrites the uh, HTML. And now when I render that file in my browser, I see a big warning that says, file blocked, you're downloading a virus. So this proves that um, a number of things, right? This proves that east-west protection and a protocol application layer is possible via NetX integration with NSX and also possible with OpenStack, assuming, of course, that the end user of OpenStack is not in charge of the security lifecycle of the app, right? Which is, by the way, a very, very common practice for, with, with, with some enterprise OpenStack customers. They put, only put, only expose certain API services to the, end, the application users, but retain control of the network and security policies. When uh, our engineering teams promotes to Neutron all this uh, redirection capabilities, it will be possible to do everything from OpenStack. So at that point, the tenants will also be a, a able to create their own redirection policies if the cloud admin allows them to do so. OK? Yeah. So the last thing that we wanted to show was uh, VROPs, right? Yeah. A little bit of uh, monitoring. Um, hopefully, network uh, operations, monitoring, troubleshooting is not an afterthought in your deployment, um, and you're, you're also taking in, in a, into account that uh, once you get your, an OpenStack cloud with all the services, you've got to monitor and troubleshoot it. So we have a, a, a solution with vRealize operations and a, what we call a management pack that integrates services for NSX and OpenStack. So we don't have time to show you everything in uh, vRealize operations, but let's, let me just pull um, one of the most useful dashboards that we, our customers, use in vRealize operations. And this is the NSX object path. Um, there used to be this notion that because NSX uses overlays and um, there is no, co there's no, the, 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 there was some concern. There were some concerns that uh, network uh, administrators would lose visibility uh, by using overlays. That because I'm not using VLANs anymore, I'm using something else, uh, I don't see my network, I don't understand my topologies. So to address those concerns, we have a number of tools. Um, there is one called vRealize Network Insight, which uh, has been mentioned a few times throughout the day today. And we have vRealize Operations. In this case, uh, this particular dashboard is showing me the logical relationship. I'm going to click on Web Server 1, and, I'm also, and then let me just select that, and let, let me click on uh, Database Server 2. OK, um, database server one, I'm sorry, database, uh, database server and the web server one. So I'm selecting two VMs, and I want to see the logical and physical relationship between those two VMs. So this particular map is showing me here, and I'm sorry, I apologize, it's hard to see. It shows me the VM. It shows me the logical switch, AKA the network that that VM is connected to. It showed me the router that separates the web VM from the database VM, it shows me the network on the other side, and it also shows me the, uh, end, the other endpoint. There's a little firewall icon there that if I were to expand would actually tell me which firewall rules are being applied to the traffic between those two VMs. So this is the logical view and relationship from an overlay NSX perspective. We also have a physical view, which is probably going to it's going to show blank. This is a nested environment. so. We cannot display real switches and routers, but VROPs also have an SNMP, CDP, LLDP um, hook into the physical infrastructure, and we are able to paint the physical topology separating these two VMs. Again, the caveat here is that this is a nested lab, env lab environment, so there are no real switches, so we cannot display that. But this is just a little bit of a, 
a, um, a taste of what is possible with some of the tools that are um, provided by VMware for day two operations and troubleshooting. So hopefully that's um, a good demo, and I think we're going to take questions now. Or? In, a, in a minute. Yeah. So right before we skip the questions, so I just want to make sure that we put this in the context of NFE. Uh, what we've shown here is a very simple use case where we, we had a virus pass through a certain server and it was caught by a redirect rule. If you think of this in, a, in an NFE context, previously you were able to do this policy-based re redirection only at layer three. If it's coming from this IP on this port, then go this way. <coughs> now we can do it through layer four through seven, so we can have more of a logical service graph built out based on host name, IP, or origination, destination, protocol, or even, even um, you know, a sample of the data payload can all be factors that determine where the packets are going. And this lets you build a lot more, you can have a very simple interface to build a very complex service graph, which as we all know in the mobility space, the, the service graphs can get pretty intense. By being able to do it like this with this tool, it makes a very simple logical and a graphical interface where you can actually see where your packets are going and how your network is physically laid out without having to sit there and examine every IP and net flow with a complex tool. So with that, any questions? And if you have questions, please, if you can come up to the mic so we can uh, get them. Ask a question, get a t-shirt. <laughs> any questions about NFE topologies in general? So the question was, where is the Fortinet firewall in that logical diagram? And that's, that's, a, that's a great question. Yep. The Fortinet firewall in that diagram, or in the topology, and I'll show it to you, is in the compute cluster. So I kind of read my mind. I was going to show you that anyways. It's, it's in the compute cluster. So I have a compute cluster here with two hosts, right? And this, under this resource group called ESX agent, I have one, two Fortinet VMs, one per host. So NSX in the kernel redirects the interesting traffic to these VMs. And those are the VMs that actually do, in the, the case of the demo, the AV inspection, the antivirus inspection. We need in our architecture for the standalone NSX case, for the OpenStack uh, use case, and for the NFV use case, it's all the same. It's always the same. We need one VNF, we need one next generation firewall per compute cluster. But it's only where your OpenStack in instances are located. Right? And we do this at a cluster level. You don't have to do it across your entire OpenStack infrastructure. You can only do it on the clusters that are high risk, if you will, and that you want to, where you want to see more uh, of a protocol view of the east-west traffic. Yeah, and this, this integration with NSX is key. So when you think about traditional firewall topologies, your firewall sat kind of outside of your compute, compute network, and all of your traffic had to hairpin through it and then come back in. Because the firewall is integrated directly with the hypervisor kernel and it exists on each physical host, that traffic doesn't go anywhere. It's validated directly on that host right away. Absolutely. So does that, hopefully that answers the, the question. Um, the management console for all this is in, in the management. When I logged into this uh, website or this, this, into this, you know, console, configuration console, this is in the management cluster, right? Managing those um, VMs for, for Fortinet in the compute cluster. So one, the Fortinet VMs are in the data path. This view here is another VM that is not in the data path. It's just management plane. So that's, that's the architecture. Any, any other question, comment? OK, um, you want me to take that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. So the, uh, the question is, can I redirect traffic to a physical firewall uh, instead of a, a logical uh, or um, virtual uh, firewall? The answer is um, no. I mean, right now. Uh, the redirection in the kernel is not a network redirection. And once you understand how NetX redirection works, you will see why that um, is like it is. This redirection is not a network redirection. The packet that gets redirected or the redirection is not done based on destination IP, destination MAC, 
none of that. Actually, the redirection happens be before the packet touches the software switch, in this case called virtual distributed switch, the software switch that exists inside of the hypervisor. It's, 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 it's not network, it's networkless, I should say. So because of that and the redirection happening, happens in the kernel, we're doing it to a service VM that is connected to that hypervisor. Yeah. With that said, we are looking into uh, uh, solutions with our next generation firewalls, such as Palo Alto and Fortinet, to implement a redirection policy and a redirection strategy that actually sends that traffic to the physical firewall. Yeah. What exists today, and this is true for all of our major uh, third-party uh, uh, firewall vendors that integrate into the kernel, uh, into NSX with NetX, what is true today is that once you create a policy that applies to your virtual environment, all the solutions synchronize th that policy with the physical environment. Um, Palo Alto, for example, calls that notifies gr notify groups. So when you create something that applies to a virtual firewall, they can take the exact same policy and apply to a physical, creating the illusion of single policy across virtual and physical. Right? So, and the same is true with Checkpoint and Fortinet. You can reconcile the security policy that, that you have in the virtual with the physical. So that creates that notion of single pane of, uh, of management for the firewall and for the security policy. And it's also important to note that while you can't redirect to a physical firewall today using this type of configuration, if you just want to do it with straight layer two, you absolutely can. Exactly. Network redirection, as we've been doing for 20 years, is still possible here. Just send it send the IP packet to a next hop and then cross your fingers that that next hop will enforce whatever security policy in the service chain, right? Any other question? Okay. okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming and uh, feel free to sneak up front and collect a shirt so we don't have to take them all home. <laughs> and uh, see either one of us if you have any questions after, after our talk.